This lesson is based on the textbook Modern Welding, 11th edition. If an alternate edition is used of Modern Welding, you will have to look up the chapter that pertains to the material covered. Chapter 6, Shielded Metal Arc Welding. Objectives. Demonstrate your ability to correctly complete a safety inspection on an arc welding station. Identify all the hand tools, personal safety equipment, and clothing required for a given welding task. Demonstrate your ability to select the correct electrode, current, and polarity for welding with the shielded metal arc welding process in a given welding position. Objectives. Demonstrate your ability to strike an arc and produce acceptable stringer and weave beads. Demonstrate your ability to correctly restart the arc and blend the new and old beads. Demonstrate your ability to use the shielded metal arc welding process to create acceptable welds on all five basic joints in all positions. Demonstrate your ability to inspect and differentiate between acceptable and unacceptable welds. Identify weld defects and the possible causes. Shielded Metal Arc Welding Shielded Metal Arc Welding, SMAW, is a commonly used welding process. Both alternating and direct current can be used for shielded metal arc welding. With the correct size electrode, the heat generated can melt any weldable metal. SMAW is used in many industries and applications. Direct Current Arc Welding Fundamentals Arc welding is a group of welding processes that melt the base metal using heat from an electric arc. SMAW is done by producing an arc between the base metal and a consumable, flux-covered metal electrode. Arc welding power sources are called welding machines. The person operating the welding machine is the welder. Direct Current Arc Welding Fundamentals Ohm's Law for Electricity states that voltage in a closed circuit has a constant relationship to the current and the resistance of the current. This illustration shows a diagram of a direct current electrode negative arc welding circuit. Constant Current Power Sources Constant current power sources are drooper type power sources. A welder using shielded metal arc welding must try to keep a constant arc length. The current changes slightly as the arc length changes. To make a good quality weld, the welder must find and keep the proper arc length. Constant current power sources. The illustration below describes the parts of a shielded metal arc weld. Direct current electrode negative and direct current electrode positive fundamentals. In a direct current electrode negative circuit, the electrons flow from the negative terminal of the machine to the electrode. This process was formerly called direct current straight polarity. Direct current electrode negative and direct current electrode positive fundamentals. In a direct current electrode positive circuit, the electrons flow from the negative terminal of the machine to the base metal. This was previously called direct current reverse polarity. The choice of when to use direct current electrode negative or direct current electrode positive is determined by the electrode and the material being used. Direct current electrode negative and direct current electrode positive Fundamentals. Direct current electrode positive produces better penetration than direct current electrode negative. This illustration shows a diagram of a direct current electrode positive arc welding circuit. Direct current always flows from negative to positive. Alternating current arc welding fundamentals. Several types of arc welding machines are used. Transformer type, 
as shown in the illustration, inverter and motor or engine driven generators. Alternating current arc welding fundamentals. The current's frequency is measured in cycles per second, or hertz. The current in the USA is 60 hertz current. In most parts of the world, 50 hertz current is used. Alternating current arc welding fundamentals. A method used to stabilize the AC arc is to increase the ionization of the material in the arc. This is achieved with the addition of ionizing agents in the electrode coating. Not all electrodes are designed for use with alternating current. Welds performed with AC electrodes show good penetration. Selecting an arc welding machine. Selecting the type of current to use should be done after considering the advantages and disadvantages. Characteristics of a DC constant current type arc welding machine. The ability to choose direct current electrode positive, known as direct current reverse polarity. The ability to choose direct current electrode negative, or known as direct current straight polarity. Electrodes designed to weld nickel, aluminum, and copper generally use direct current electrode positive. Selecting an arc welding machine. A disadvantage of a DC arc welding machine is that they are generally more expensive than a similar AC machine. Advantages of AC constant current arc welders. Welds have good penetration with little arc wander, greater filler metal deposition rates and faster welding speeds, and machines are generally less expensive than similar DC arc welding machines. Selecting an arc welding machine. The major disadvantage of AC arc welding machines is that not all electrodes can be used with alternating current. Welding machines capable of both AC and DC operation are available. Inspecting an arc welding station. The arc welding station includes several parts. Arc welding power source, electrode lead and terminals, workpiece lead and terminals, electrode holder, workbench, and ventilation. Inspecting an arc welding station. Before beginning to weld, check all parts of the arc welding station. Check that the electrode and workpiece leads are tightly attached to the machine. Inspect the electrode holder and make sure the handle is not cracked. Turn on the ventilation system to see that it is working or make sure you have proper ventilation where you are welding. Safety, protective clothing, and shielding. Arc welding should be performed using the proper safety equipment. There are several hazards to be avoided. Radiation from the arc, such as ultraviolet rays, flying sparks and small pieces of molten metal or spatter, electric shock, fumes, and burns. Safety. Helmets with approved lenses must be worn to protect eyes from arc radiation. Never look at an arc from any distance unless your eyes are protected by approved filter lenses. Wear gloves and protective clothing to shut out rays from the arc. Radiation from welding is very similar to the sun. The difference is it happens almost immediately. Safety, protective clothing, and shielding. The arc welding operation should be shielded so that no one can look directly at the arc. It is advisable to wear suitable clothing to protect against flying sparks. Electric shock hazards can be avoided by working on a dry floor and wearing dry gloves. The health hazard from fumes 
can be avoided by using proper ventilation equipment or having proper ventilation where you are welding. Safety, protective clothing, and shielding. Proper personal protective equipment, PPE, should be worn at all times. Realize that welding gloves are not intended to pick up or hold hot material. Use the proper tools to hold hot metal. Vice grips or locking jaw pliers are recommended. Safety. Do not carry flammable materials when welding. Lighters are a bad idea. Wear leather shoes with safety toes. Avoid using arc welding equipment in wet or damp areas. Perform welding in an area that is well ventilated. Handle hot metal with locking jaw pliers. Before beginning to weld, inspect the complete arc welding station to make certain it is safe for use. Arc welding power source. An arc welding machine should never be started or stopped under a load. Arc welding machines powered by AC are easy to start and stop using an on off switch or buttons. Constant current type arc welding machines are used for manual arc welding processes. The desired current is set on the machine. Arc welding power source. Amperage controls vary in appearance, location, and operation on various machines. Selecting the proper electrode. Several factors should be considered when selecting an electrode for shielded metal arc welding. Weld groove design, required tensile strength, base metal composition, position of the weld joint, rate at which to deposit weld metal, type of arc welding current used, penetration required, metal thickness, experience of the welder, and specifications for the weld to be made. Selecting the proper electrode. When a groove weld is made, the electrode must be small enough to manipulate at the root of the weld. The metal composition of the base metal will determine the metal composition of the electrode used. Selecting the proper electrode. The welding position is a good starting point in choosing an electrode. Electrodes are made to be most effective with one type of welding current. When a welding procedure specification is used, the electrodes are specified. Striking the arc. To strike an arc, the electrode must first touch the base metal to complete the circuit. The electrode is then pulled back and the current jumps the gap to create the arc. When attempting to strike an arc, the electrode may stick. The amperage set too low can be the problem. Another problem may occur is withdrawing the electrode too far. This will cause excessive spatter and porosity and eventually will extinguish the arc. Striking the arc. Two common methods used. The scratch method. Drag the electrode across the material with the end of the electrode or the tap method. Use a straight down and up motion with the end of the electrode. Depending on the type of electrode and how they are coated will help decide which one of these to use. Running a bead. The first skill that a welder must master is the ability to run a bead. Pad work is usually how it's done. The arc length must be varied slightly as different electrode diameters and types are used. When small, solidified metal drops are seen on the base metal surface, spatter is occurring. When starting out, try different settings. Turn the amps way up, turn the amps way down. Try shorter and longer arc distance. If you don't know what is wrong, you can't fix it. Running a bead. Stringer beads are narrow weld beads 
the width of two to three times the bare electrode diameter. Weave beads are wide weld beads made by moving the weld pool side to side, the width of up to six times the bare electrode diameter. Running a bead. The speed of forward motion is judged by two factors, the bullet nose shape of the ripples and the bead width. If you're going too slow, you'll have excessive width and excessive penetration. If you're moving too fast, you'll have a narrower width, elongated ripple pattern, and shallower penetration. If you use the recommended speed, the width will be two to three times the diameter of the electrode, uniform ripple pattern, and full penetration. Running a bead. Weld reinforcement is the amount of buildup above the surface of the base metal. There is root reinforcement and face reinforcement. The proper current setting is important to make a quality weld or bead. A practical application of weld beads is the rebuilding of worn surfaces. Another application of beadwork is hard surfacing or wear resistant surfacing. Restarting a bead. A weld bead can be restarted on a run-on tab and continued onto the weldment. It may be easy or difficult to restart an arc with the electrode. Restarting the arc must be done with care. Low hydrogen electrodes can be more difficult to restart. Finishing a bead. When a shielded metal arc welding bead is stopped prior to completion, a deep crater is left in the base metal. There are two ways to finish a bead without leaving a crater. You could use a runoff tab to leave the crater off the joint, or you can reverse the electrode direction as the end of the weld is reached to fill in the crater. Cleaning the bead. When stick electrodes are used, a brittle slag coating is left on the weld bead. This slag must be removed prior to restarting a bead. If the slag is not removed, the resulting weld will most likely have slag inclusions or porosity. Most types of electrodes have a heavy slag, but some have minimal slag, like the E6010-6011. The E6010-6011 is also much easier to restart with and attack parts together with. Direct current arc blow. A DC arc may have a tendency to wander from the weld line and it is called arc blow. There are two types of arc blow, forward arc blow and backward arc blow. If the arc blow is very strong, preventative or corrective measures can be taken. A long runoff tab can place the arc blow problem area off the weldment. Direct current arc blow. A welder can use the back step method to create a continuous weld by performing a number of short welds to avoid arc blow. Arc welding joint designs. Shielded metal arc welding can be done on any of the basic joint designs. Butt, corner, edge, lap, and T-joints. Weld joints may be in any position flat, horizontal, vertical, and overhead. 1G, 2G, 3G, and 4G for groove welds on plate. 1F, 2F, 3F, and 4F for fillet welds on plate. And 1G, 2G, 5G, and 6G for groove welds on pipe. Weld flaws and defects. Completed welds may have a variety of flaws or imperfections. If a flaw is large, it is called a defect. A weld may have a properly contoured face or an undercut condition. The illustration below shows several defects. Spatter, undercut, too much or too little penetration. Weld flaws and defects. 
If the bead has a number of small pit holes, this indicates porosity. Other surface flaws may be seen during a visual inspection. Spatter, slag inclusions, cracks in the weld bead or weld crater. If a defect is found that exceeds what is allowed, the weld must be repaired. Shielded metal arc welding welding techniques. SMAW requires time to be well skilled. A number of variables must be controlled to make a good weld. Arc length, travel speed, travel and work angles, electrode motion, and machine settings. Edge joint in flat welding position. An edge joint may be welded in any position. On thin metal, no edge preparation is needed. On thicker pieces of metal, the edge should be prepared to provide a bevel V, U, or J groove. A piece of the same material being welded should be used for practice. Edge joint in flat welding position. Run test beads and reset the arc welding machine current until the desired bead is achieved. A tack weld is a small, well-fused weld used to hold parts in proper alignment. Lap joints in flat welding position. Lap joints are commonly made in flat or horizontal welding positions, as are most welds in general. Fillet welds are used with lap joints. To weld a lap joint, the electrode should have a 20 degree drag travel angle and about a 45 degree work angle. The pictures in this slide show a butt joint with a 15 to 30 degree drag travel angle and a T joint with three different work angles. Lap joints in flat welding position. The fillet weld on a lap joint is made on the edge of one piece and the surface of the other piece. The finished bead should have the proper contour, be straight, and have a consistent width. Position will alter the travel and work angles. Corner and T-joints in flat position. Inside corner joints are often made by butting two base metals together to form a square groove joint. An outside corner joint is similar to a butt joint. An inside corner is similar to a T-joint. Corner and T-joints in flat position. A T-joint is formed by placing one piece of base metal on the other to form a T-shape. This joint can be welded from one or both sides. Butt joints in flat welding position. It is suggested that a butt weld be practiced on low carbon steel, quarter inch to three eighths inch thick. For thin base metal, only one pass is required. Thick metal requires additional passes. Backing bars may be used or an open root may be used. Many times the joint will be welded from both sides. Butt joints in flat welding position. Use the keyhole method to ensure complete penetration in a groove weld. Many weld joints require more than one electrode to complete the weld. Butt joints in flat welding position. Some weld beads require remelting the existing crater before resuming the weld. The welder must clean the bead before attempting to add another bead. The weld should have no small cavities and should have good fusion. A wandering arc will result in incomplete fusion and a non-uniform weld bead. Butt joints in flat welding position. The final beads used to fill the joint should be built above the original top surface. The illustration shows multiple ways to place the beads. If the beads do not fill up completely to the top of the surface of the joint, it is called underfill. Safety. Always wear safety glasses when removing slag and cleaning metal. Not a bad idea to chip slag with your helmet down. Face shields must be worn when using a grinder with any type of wheel on it.
Shielded Metal Arc Welding in Horizontal Position When making a fillet weld on a horizontal lap joint, the electrode should point more toward the surface than toward the edge. A straight drag motion without manipulation is usually all that is needed. If manipulation is used, try the suggested motions from this illustration. Shielded Metal Arc Welding in vertical position. Welding in the vertical position may be done in either one of two directions. Uphill, also called vertical up, or downhill, also called vertical down. The weld must be made so that slag is not entrapped in the weld metal. The material should not run or drip. Vertical up takes more skill to make cosmetically good, but a vertical down weld can look nice and break easily if not done correctly. Shielded metal arc welding in vertical position. The uphill method of welding is generally preferred. With downhill welding, the slag has a tendency to run into the molten weld pool. Shielded metal arc welding in vertical position. To control the weld pool heat and allow the metal time to cool, a weaving motion is used. Vertical butt, edge, and outside corner joints can be prepared using square, V, bevel, J, or U-groove edges. In a vertical weld, the bead must be straight with a uniform width. The weld must be properly fused. Shielded metal arc welding in overhead position. Overhead arc welding is generally the most difficult. Most electrode holders have jaws designed to allow the electrode to be held in a variety of positions. Be sure to try these out and find out what works best for you. Shielded metal arc welding in overhead position. If covered electrodes are bent to change their angle for welding, be aware the covering will crack and that area of the electrode cannot be used. It is important to keep metal in the molten weld pool from falling due to gravity. A weaving motion is used to keep an overhead weld pool cool enough to control. Safety. A welder's helmet, cap, leather coat, and leather gloves should be worn when overhead welding. All pockets should have closed flaps on them. Earplugs can prevent spatter from entering the ear canal. Review of safety in shielded metal arc welding. Safety rules must be carefully observed to prevent welding accidents. Protect your eyes and face with an approved helmet. Wear recommended clothing and shoes. Avoid open pockets and cuffs. Keep the floor of the welding area dry and free of debris and work on electrical power connections only if you are an experienced electrician. Review of safety in shielded metal arc welding. Safety rules continued. Wear heavy gauntlet type gloves. Cover all skin during arc welding to prevent burns. Protect against harmful fumes by having good ventilation or a source of filtered air. Never operate an AC welding machine with the welding cables wrapped around the welding machine. Inspect cables for any cuts and have them repaired. When in doubt, ask.